All right, Gabe, this one's for you. How I find uh, my Hudson River tide charts. You can use a website and there's a ton of them out there. You just Google Hudson River tide charts for whatever town, Hudson, Poughkeepsie, Kingston, and you'll find some. Um, I just use my Lorance crafts. Usually I'm out in a boat, you know, like I am here, just sitting in a parking lot. So for this example, we're gonna say uh, we've got a tournament Saturday on the Hudson. And we're gonna be fishing out of uh, Charlie Ryder in Kingston. So I know I'm gonna be looking anywhere from Newburgh to um, Catskill. Kingston will give me my starting point. So that's where I'm gonna start. Uh, I may be interested in this. So a couple of things you'll find is on my Lowrance units, it's been this way for a while, I've got right on the charts, I have tide charts and current. But you can kind of gauge the current by um, the steepness of the tide, right? So we're gonna go to, don't pay attention to all these little waypoint things. Cornwall, there's one tide chart, there's the current, current and tide, another tide. Another Tide, High Park, Statsburg, Port Ewan, and Kingston. So you'll see right there, that's the Tide chart, right? So we zoom in on that Tide chart. This is just up the creek a little bit. And we click on that, 3.8, and hit your enter button. And there's my Tide chart. So you can see there's two pretty tall tides and a pretty low tide. And what that is, is over here, you have your zero to six feet. Uh, zero being the mean low tide level, the average low tide level. If you see it go below that, that means it's gonna be uh, an exceptionally low tide, but more times than not, you'll see it like this one. You'll see this first low tide during the day is right at the low water mark, but this one, is about probably half a foot above and it'll tell you right there that's what that 4.41 feet that's what that 3.8 feet says so it's telling you that there's going to be a 3.8 foot tide right now it is currently when we looked at that tide chart it is currently at 3.8 feet when we looked at that little thing there it says 3.8 right there that means right now the tide is 3.8 up from that normal zero, right? So if you're used to your water levels and you get used to where you are, you're gonna know like if uh, that barge is exposed or if that barge is under the water, you know, and that only comes with time. That only comes with time spent out there on that river knowing what water level things have. And you'll hear me say it every once in a while, like I'll get burned by the tide a little bit. And we're gonna talk about that in a few seconds here about things like uh, outside influences, right? So we have low tide 0.41 at 2.10 a.m., high tide 3.8 feet at 7.56 a.m., low tide second time at 0.01 foot, so that's basically zero, 2.30, and then 4.1, so you got a four foot high. So that means it's gonna be a four foot swing. So that means if uh, you're fishing a, a, a suck hole at, at zero low slack tide right here, when it's at full tide, it's gonna to be four foot higher, 4.1 to be exact. That's a pretty large tide swing. So what you'll also notice is the higher that tide swing, right? The higher that tide swing, the faster that current's gonna be. So when these waves are spaced out, it's not gonna be a strong a current. So if you see this up here, this down here, this up here, this down here, that's gonna be there. So then what I do is uh, we're gonna fish Saturday. Uh, say we're gonna fish uh, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I just set my calendar, I go to Saturday the 15th, and there's my tide, right? Saturday the 15th. I could see we're launching at 6 a.m. 
we're going to be just bottoming out on the tide. Right, tide's going to be just finishing going out, and it's going to be about a 0.18 foot, a quarter foot, four, four, six inches over the normal low. So we're not going to have those super low tides. And you go out there on the river and you'll start seeing things like you've never seen before, and that's when you find a super low tide, and I'm going to try to find it. But you can also see your high tide is only a 3.3 foot swing. So from 0.8 to 3.3 is what, 3.2 feet? So that's going to be a relatively um, low high tide, right? It's not going to be up in the bushes. It's not going to be up in the trees. It's going to be a high tide, but it's not going to make it to the normal um, uh, four to four and a half foot high tide mark. So then you can kind of judge how far you're traveling. Now, the outside influences that I was just mentioning earlier, we've just had six, seven inches of rain. That current that rain, that water that is adding to this is going to change that number. And it's also going to change that number. So you could expect now with this heavy rain that we've just had, that the water levels are going to be higher on the low tide and they're also going to be higher on the high tide. Because of the addition of water, you're going to see some current increases. So an example of a current increase is like you look at a railroad trestle. I, I forgot what you call them. Uh, when you uh, ask me a question on, on YouTube. Some of them are what we call as the nickname suck holes. A suck hole means it's breathing in and out, right? So as the tide goes up and down, there's a big, huge backwater that's out there. Um, I'll show you an example of that right here when we go to our, our map, right? So this is gonna have a lot of water it's going to flow in there through those three openings and it's going to you know obviously raise the tide it's going to push all that water in when it comes out it's going to try to pull all that water out of those three little openings so when you have that high tide swing you're going to have some pretty stout currents now you do have a couple of creeks back here that's flowing into this so that's going to add water so that's going to make that outgoing even a little bit more and it's going to slow down the incoming so as the water's pushing the creek, the, the, the water's flowing, the creeks are flowing in some of these backwaters, just about every one of these backwaters has a, has a creek. Um, as that water is flowing into that and the tide is trying to come in, they're gonna react against one another and it's gonna slow the tide down. So it's not gonna raise as fast. It's gonna basically be held back. So that's a water influence that's gonna affect that tide. Incoming water is going to affect it. Uh, the other thing that will affect it is winds. So if you get a really strong south wind on an incoming tide, it's going to help push that water up the river. It's going to make the tides flow a little bit quicker. It's going to raise it a little bit. It's going to make it go up a little bit higher. Um, if that tide turns around and goes out, now with the, the wind pushing the water this way and the tides going that way, that makes for what we call the bumpies. That's the backbreakers. That's gonna give you the tide rollers. That's gonna give you the three to four to six foot waves that I've seen out there uh, that you're gonna really be crashing hard on. But that will also slow down that outgoing tide a little bit, right? So if you have, like we have now, heavy rains, if you gave us a nice 15, 20 mile an hour north wind on an outgoing tide, that's going to help push that water down that river and all that extra water that's flowing in that's trying to flow down that river that's going to make for a pretty stout current flowing out so you kind of learn more about that the more time you spend out there uh, where you want to be um, you know does a suck hole fish better on an incoming or an outgoing um, fish tend to be around them either way right uh, they'll be in a current breaks. They tend to not be right out in there. You may catch them right out in that channel You know right out in the middle of this You may catch them right in the middle of that But I promise you they're behind something a rock or something. They're not just sitting there swimming um, They'd expend all their energy and they'd turn skinny But because of that heavy feeding action in that heavy current you'll notice that a smallmouth that lives there will be skinnier than one that lives back here in the slack or when it lives over here that's protected behind a point or something. You know, say for example, uh, you get something in this bay, 
you get something here. And uh, you know, that point right there, that's got current brakes on it. This suck hole, this gets chestnuts. All of that's all good stuff. There's, there's literally a bunch of things that, that you could fish right in there. Um, you can see my track where I was just randomly driving around marking things. Um, but there's another, another tide chart, another three, three point eight foot, three and a half foot swing tide chart. My fingers don't work for touchscreen; they're broken. So again, that's more almost to Saugerties, uh, Sopus Creek. You can see that it's almost high tide. So you could find these same tide charts on the the internet on the web. You could find them where they're just numbers. They tend to be a little harder to read. You know, the ebb tides, uh, the the flood tides. Rising, flood, ebb, falling, slack, slack, you know, when they're up in the top. Uh, generally, the points and all that stuff like that, they want to have water moving on them. Hardest time to catch fish is on an absolute high tide. High tide is when you tend to get back into bays, you get behind the water chestnuts, you get places where normally your boat won't be able to get, you know, kind of uh, kayaky kind of stuff. So they're pretty strong. So let's say two weeks away on the 29th. You'll see the, that they're lower and they're a half foot. So these are pretty gentle, slow sweeping tides. These are all calculated. They're all calculated years in advance. They could tell you five years from now what the tide is calculated to be and what it's calculated to be doing just by the moon and the sun face. You know, full moon versus new moon versus crescent moon versus half moon. I, I don't know all the moon faces. Um, I used to, um, you know, try to worry about all that stuff. But what I found is um, if I got to go fishing Saturday, because I worked all week, doesn't matter what the tide is. If I got to launch on a high tide, if I got to launch on a low tide, let's find a low, low one. Pretty ridiculously low tides, but you get the point. This is where, like there, a minus 2.7. That one right there, I can promise you, in Kingston, it's going to make it tough to put a boat on the ramp in uh, Slaysburg. Uh, tires are probably going to fall off the end of the concrete. So that's it. Your tide movement. Zero is your normal um, low tide level. Four is your feet in swing. Low one and a low one. Look at that. Minus 0.55. That's one of those, you know, look ones. And this is going to be a very low. And that's going to be a very high. So we're going to go... 0.55 a half a foot 4.7 so you're at five and a quarter five five point two five feet basically um, five point two five foot swing that's one of the tall ones so that tide is going to move five feet in one day from the bottom to the top and that is a lot uh, if you started on that five um, you're going to have a pretty stout current all day you're going to have a, a falling tide all day. Falling tides tend to be a little bit better. It pulls fish out off of things. Uh, pulls the feed, the minnows, and, and everything that they're doing off of the, the, the bays and things. And uh, puts them in their comfort zone. And they tend to come out and, and feed on the current breaks. But by the time you get down here, you're going to start seeing things you don't normally see. And if it's crystal clear, you'll find bikes and barges and all kinds of cool stuff. And that's how I... Uh, that's how I find my tar tides. I don't use the websites anymore. I used to. Uh, I just usually the day before I'm, you know, picking my stuff and I'm trying to make a game plan. You know, I'll dictate, you know, where I'm fishing, where I'm headed, um, what time of year it is, if it's in the spring versus if it's in the fall. You know, something like this. I may be pushing chestnuts in the summertime, um, in the springtime, or in the fall. I'll be sticking to the points and the uh, riprap banks and the outflows and things like that that's gonna you know collect all the bait and get the fish around it i hope this helps man let me know grab me a comment thumbs up like something i'm at 820 subs only 180 more to go and uh i get some of that google money still doing it for free all right peace out y'all